Hi there, my name is Isaac Oster, and in this video we're going to talk about how to import these assets, a piece of geometry and some textures, into an Unreal project, and then create a material instance that uses this as its parent, and then plugs these textures in and applies it to the material slot. So this is going to be based on, or extending, the uh, previous two videos. The first one covers exporting a selection that you have in the content browser. And then the second video covers importing an asset from a file path, or in this case, several assets. So I've added a few lines to both of these. The first line that I added is setting an attribute to replace existing to true for our asset import data so that it'll just override anything that happens to be in the project already. And then the other thing that I added is a little section here that will handle uh, selected textures. Now, probably the better way to do this would be to detect the textures that are associated with static mesh and then just run them through this as a, like a separate process. But anyway, this is how you would do that if, if uh, you wanted to just handle a selection other than geometry. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new function called build selected assets. And I am going to create a reference to this object, this material. And then I just need to get the path. So I'm going to just right click over here and copy file path, probably OK. Paste it in. And then I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. So you basically want to go to content and replace that with game. And it needs a forward slash. And then we want to just take off that U asset at the end. And that'll give us a reference to the material parent. So the next thing we need to do is get a reference to our imported objects. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just run this. We don't have to call this yet, but everything else should work just fine, as is. Looking for asset importer. All right. So here's our new objects. Ultimately, we're going to need to delete this. This is the material that comes in by default with the FBX. But we can hold off on that for just a moment. First, we have to identify it. So we have some information here that's very useful, which is the import file paths. So what we can actually do is go through everything in the folder that we just imported our assets into and track down, you can see at the bottom there, that source file. If we double click it and then scroll down a bit, let's see, file path. So this is, right now it's, it's giving a relative path, but it has access to the full thing. And so we can actually compare this data for every single asset in our folder here to our paths to say like, yes, this is something that I just imported or no, this is something that was here before because we don't really want to mess with whatever assets might already be in this folder. I'm going to be using another method here on editor asset library called list assets. We feed it a directory path and it'll give us the asset paths for everything that is in the directory. And because I'm going to be using the editor asset library a few times, I'm just going to create a single instance of it. So I'm going to need a directory path and I have it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just set up a function call inside import assets. And we'll just add an argument here called folder path. So now when this function is called, it'll be passed whatever this happens to be, which is something you would probably want to get user data from via you know, UI or something. So now we've got the asset paths that are associated with every asset in the folder. And now we need to load the asset. But it might actually complain. There's a, there's a, a change to how the asset paths are handled. I'll go ahead and print the asset path real quick so we can take a look at it. Very 
Right. So these are the asset paths for everything in there. And it does this little thing here, which didn't used to be a problem, but now is a problem. If you were to try to load this asset, it'll complain. I'll go ahead and do that. Really, you just got to trim everything past that dot and it'll work just fine. Uh, but we can go ahead and run through the regular process using load asset to show you the issue. And I'll set this equal to asset. Right, so this is the issue here. Try convert file name to long package name was passed, blah, blah, blah. So if, you, if you're getting this error, the, you, the problem is you've got to remove that last little bit from the path there. So we'll just try this. Right, and now it's happy. So now that we've got the assets, we can get the import file path, assuming it has one. We can take a look here at the documentation for static mesh. It has an editor property called asset import data, which will return the asset import data object associated with static mesh. And on the asset import data object, we have a method get first file name, which will return the import file path for the asset. Anything that's been imported will have an asset import data object, but any native Unreal objects such as a material will not. So we need to have a little check in here that we'll add momentarily. So we'll grab the asset import data editor property. And from the asset import data, we'll use get first file name. And we'll just print the import file path. Now this is gonna yield an error because not everything in here has an asset import data object. But let's take a look at what that error looks like. So you can see the, there's an attribute error none type object has no attribute get first file name. So what we've done here is we've asked for the asset import data object associated with the asset. And then we are calling this method here. But if this returns as none, obviously this method doesn't exist on none. So that's what the issue is. So we can do a try accept here. Let's run it again. And here you can see all of our import file paths for the textures. And then here is the geometry as well. So now that I've got the import file paths for all of the assets in the directory, at least the assets that have import file paths, I can compare them against the files that I just imported and identify the new assets in here that need to be set up. So I'm going to need to pass in my list of file names. So I'll just add another argument. And rather than printing this, we're going to do a little comparison. And then we need to identify whether or not it is a texture or a piece of geometry. So I'm just going to create a list up here. So 
If I can find the import file path associated with the asset in my list of recently imported assets, then I'm going to do a check to see if it's either a static mesh or a texture and then put it into the appropriate list. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to identify and delete the default material created when we imported the geometry, how to create a new material instance and assign the material parent, how to assign the textures, and then how to take that new material instance and assign it to our geometry.